We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Mavs fans, welcome to Pod Maverick After Dark. This is Kirk Henderson and Josh Bow. We are joining you at about 1045 on Saturday, January 27th. The Dallas Mavericks just lost to the Sacramento Kings. What was the score? 120 to 115? Does that sound right? Yeah, that sounds right. Josh, how you doing? Um, I'm doing okay. I'm glad to see your face. We're talking again um unfortunately we didn't get to talk together about the awesome game we have to talk about the the game that we were watching we're like "Hmm, okay that was that was certainly a basketball game that's right right so for (laughs) for a little more context yeah (laughs) um i had like a a luckily a all is well family emergency which required josh to step in and do some things that i had basically decided i was going to do last night all's well on my uh end here just very tired i am also very um lazy and that i didn't even bother setting up my correct podcast stuff i usually have like camera and set up and even though i can move it all around my house i just sort of made the executive decision i wasn't going to move a bunch of equipment around my house tonight because midway through the third quarter of this game the mavericks are down by like 20 points and it's like what what are we going to talk about in this game <laughs> um then they ended up coming all the way back because the kings are stupid and uh here we very are. very smart well, I mean, yeah, that. there's there's I certainly I, I like that silly. theory. I like that theory. <laughs> you know, Luka Doncic playing 90 minutes over the course of two nights is is pretty preposterous, scoring like 100 bajillion, you know, grabbing Tim Tim McMahon said Luka Doncic is the first player in NBA history to average a 50 point triple double over a two game span. Pretty riotous. Um, how do we really talk about this game? This is just a game of of the Kings being fresher, deeper and better. Yeah, and I mean, the Mavericks, I mean, they missed presumably, I mean, they were missing at least one starter, two if you want to, you know, they were missing Exum and Jones, who are, what, at least two of their top six players right. on the roster right now, maybe two of their top five, depending on how you, you want to look at it. So right. uh, they were, I mean, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a scheduled, you know, scheduled loss. Like, I mean, there was, I mean, if anything... I'm kind of rambling already to start. This really was the worst, you know, this was the worst case scenario for this game, I think, because I don't think anyone would have batted an eye if they lost a 10, 15, 20. You know, if this was a blowout, I don't think anyone really would have noted because Luca, I mean, Luca gave it all last night against the Hawks. I mean, he scored 73 in 45 minutes. Like, I don't think anyone was expecting this team to do much with being even shorthanded than they were against the Hawks. So the fact that this game ended up being as competitive as it was forcing Luca to play, he's basically played what he played 45 and 46. I mean, he's played basically two full games in two nights and they're about to play the hardest stretch of their entire season. Um, 
tonight started it because the Kings are, are a winning team, although they're they're kind of weird, as they showed in the fourth quarter. But, I mean, they're about to play Philly, Milwaukee, New York, Oklahoma City. Um, this schedule is, is a real bear here. And it's not ideal that you add – Luca basically play 90 minutes in 48 hours. Like, I, you know, I hope the Mavericks can get him off his feet. I mean, I hope they can get him ready. Uh, I, and I don't blame anyone either. Like you can't, you could have maybe sat him to start the fourth because they were down, I think 18 to start the fourth or 20 to start the fourth. But in the NBA, those lead, like, as we watched in the fourth quarter, 20 point leads don't mean anything. anymore. Like they just disappear in an instant. So like, I can't, it's not necessarily a blunder. It's just bad luck, I think, with the way the game worked out. Because you're playing at home. Like, you're not going to pull Luka at home in a game that, that you can still theoretically win. If it was 30 points to start the fourth quarter, 30-point lead for the Kings, I, I might understand it. But it was – I mean, it was within it was within a shot. And it was – I mean, it was clear. They proved it because they got, they got it down to six points with the ball uh, and shooting a wide-open three. And then uh, – Tim Hardaway Jr. kind of coughed it up in the final two possessions. Shout, so that's shout t- out to <laughs> shout out to, to Harp. I just yeah. I need like I I've done kind of a roller coaster ride with the Harp game co- color commentating experience because he seemed to have the, this last year in particular he seemed to turn into like a bit of a like jolly curmudgeon who just doesn't care if he pisses people off like the rooms to go thing where he slandered one of the. Uh, Mavs like uh, uh advertising Ashley furniture yeah the furniture so it was, it was just it killed me I was dying laughing um and he got mad at Grant Williams earlier yeah, in the yeah, season really good like he's done some like stuff that makes me feel like he's no longer you know behind the 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 you know the party line to a degree and it makes me wonder because the Mavericks haven't hadn't had him had, he's not been on as much but like every time he says a shot is going in it doesn't fucking go in I just need him to stop. To, like, I bet he has a 15% hit rate on those sorts of things. He is so wrong when he called. But, you know, I understand why he called it. Because, like, Tim was wide open. Neither here nor there. But, like, I, I am a big superstitious guy when it comes to those sorts of things. Like, don't do not do that on the broadcast. Just don't do it. Yeah, that sucked. I mean, and, yeah. I, the, the Tim, like, I mean, they have the ball. Down six, Tim gets a wide open corner three. I mean, he misses that, and then next yeah. they king score, get it back up to eight, and then Tim uh, turns it over, and that's kind of the game. I mean, obviously the Mavericks yeah. got it back because the Kings are hilarious and miss free throws, but right, he makes that three. It's a it's a it's a three point game, and the building's rocking, and the Kings look like uh, you know like they forgot how to play basketball. Like I really thought they would have won the game if Tim would have made that shot. Maybe I'm prescribing too much to to one shot that's not even tying or or taking a lead. But when he missed that shot, you could feel like you could feel the air getting sucked out of the building. Yeah. Um, Well, that that was, and then, yeah. And it just adds on. Cause now it's like, well, Luca played 46 minutes to. I mean, from a a a strategic, from a strategic point of view where, and I'm just, we're just going to get into some of the nuts and bolts of this game where the Mavericks lose the game is the 13 minutes. Maxi Cleaver plays and this negative 17 during his time on the floor. They have to play him because Derek Lively gets into foul trouble. But Derek... Sorry, my uh, auto and auto play on an ad in the background started going off. Um, <laughs> Derek Lively can't play all 48 minutes. But no, uh, Maxi against no the pal, guy... So. Yeah, and like Maxi against the guy... And granted, not like Powell would have helped against Sabonis either. Yeah, but no. just they're too small... And they're too weak. Sabonis is too skilled where you need somebody bigger with good feet to bother Sabonis, who is an all-star candidate. Like his numbers, he has absurd numbers. Uh, Demonis Sabonis does. And so it's it's one of these things where it's hard to kind of get too bent out of shape. But it's like when I'm looking at the box score, that is where I see where this game was ultimately lost. Because like Maxi. You know, they really were, you know, Bobby Corrales came on, came on a, a show that I did uh, on Friday. If you haven't listened, go listen to it. Bobby is with the Mavericks, but Bobby, I've known Bobby for 12 years. Bobby is an excellent explainer of basketball concepts. And he did a very good job of explaining why the Mavericks use um, Maxi the way they do. My challenge with Maxi is that 
Maxi is such a non-contributing zero on the offensive end. He it doesn't matter what he does on defense most of the time because the Mavericks are not able to score with Maxi on the floor. And even if he's helping slow down some of the paint points and some of the rim points, they're still getting scored on. So you're ultimately losing the Maxi minutes more often than not, I think. Yeah, and I mean it doesn't help that like I don't know what to say because he's been so injured lately, but that's kind of the point. Like, like where do you go with Maxi from here? Like, the problem. Well, you is shouldn't he, have signed him to an extension. Like the, the mean, signing to an extension, is, it's insane. Like that was <laughs> stu- like like I'm sorry. Like that was stupid at the time. It's a valuable extension in that it was three years, thirty three million. And I think this is the second year of the deal. Maybe he has three no. Left. This is the know. first year. This There's is the first more, one. It was a so each. okay. So so I think then that's safe to say. Like it was a bad deal at the time. But if you you can't lose your own guy for nothing, is I think right. probably the idea where it's like, oh, well, we can flip Maxi to somebody because here's the thing, Maxi is actually still pretty useful as a weak side rim protector. But as the only rim protector, which they keep putting him out there as a five, he he doesn't he doesn't do anything. I don't get yeah, it. And I and I mean at this point, his defense does not he is not canceling out his offense right now. Like I even if we had 2018, 2019 level maxi of defense, I mean his offense right now is so bad that he would still probably be a negative player. I mean mm-hmm. he doesn't shoot and when he shoots, he misses. Like that's you know he's not a driver he's not like a ball mover like it it's just it's tough you're playing four on five when he's on the floor right now and i know that's tough to hear because this guy was a warrior for them in their western conference finals run he was a big i mean i know he was a big reason why they made the western conference finals um but it's been tough it's been tough since then he he was not good last year he had the torn hamstring which you know is you know you can't really blame him for but no. i mean he's injury prone he's, yeah this is not like, a like his body is failing him now and, and and it was happening when they signed him to that extension it just it's it's just not it's his not body fun. had failed him by the time they yeah. signed that extension that's what makes it such a baffling decision because you know it's you know, Maxi, for all intents and purposes, and I, I don't want to make this a kick the shit out of Maxi podcast, but like he's made a series of choices the last several years that make me sort of like, like he wasn't on the German national team because he got into it with Dennis Schroeder. Then Germany went on to win the FIBA World Cup, and he's just sitting on the side, kind of looking like, Egh. and then he like like busts his toe after he tears his hamstring. The man has just had some awful, awful luck. And the Mavericks sort of willingness to go back to the well with him because he understands what to do schematically. I, I don't, I don't think it's a good choice. I mean, one of the things that Bobby and I talked about on, on the show was that they don't trust meaning the Mavericks, the Mavericks are concerned about lively playing more in space, not because they don't think he can do it. I think they're worried about foul trouble and the whistles, um, I also have some questions about whether he can do it. Like Fox kind of blew right past him a few times. That's not a cardinal sin, but if you're going to be that kind of big, you do have to provide some stops along the perimeter. And I just, I don't know if, if I don't know, L- lively, L- he's a young man. I don't want to say anything to, to, uh, to, uh, what do you want to call it? Um, too definitive about a guy who's still learning the NBA. So it's, yeah, and it's, like, a, it's, it's a tough situation all around with the Mavs bigs is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Yeah. They just, they don't have any depth. It's really all on a 19 year old rookie, which is pretty wild. And the mm-hmm. fact that he's held up as well as he did. I mean, he was probably, he was one of the best players on the floor. Uh, he had 13 and nine. Like I felt like he was pretty good fourth quarter. He was a great rim runner. So, you know, but he's going to have some, some rookie moments against, uh, you know, guys like Sabonis and playing against some of these good bigs, uh, which is not like, you know, that's kind of how it goes. But, yeah, it's just – this was a tough game. <laughs> like, it sounds really weird to say it, but the Mavericks would have been better off if the Kings had, like, an 8-0 run to start the fourth quarter um, and you just pull everyone after that. Like, yeah. I credit to, the you know, Luca for, for not wanting to quit, and I, you know uh, – Credit to Luca for on a night when Joel Embiid literally just decided he did not want that. the he did not want the smoke. Like Luca plays ninety minutes in, in two days, and Joel Embiid uh, decides he doesn't want to play Jokic in Denver ever. Um, so, 
like Mavs fans should be proud of, of Luca for these two games. Like it's, I, I don't know what it's going to happen in these next few, in this murderer's row schedule they're about to play. Hopefully this doesn't backfire on them because Luca looks absolutely worn out. Hopefully Kyrie Irving comes back soon. But I think if you're a Mavericks fan watching this game, like what do I take away from this? It's maybe that there, there's one other thing we can talk about later. That's, that's pretty obvious. But the other is like Luca is built, the way you want your star to be built <laughs> without trying to be as inflammatory towards Joel and beat as I, as I could, cause we're not uh, talking about the Sixers tonight, but I just, that kind of stuck out in my head watching this game uh, after the Embiid uh, ducking earlier today. Uh, so that's why. Uh, okay. We're going to come back to that in a second. Yeah. All right. So if you're here, go ahead and give me a like in the stream. This isn't going to be one of our finest shows, but uh, night in and night out, Josh and I, one of the two of us, and maybe somebody else from the Mavs Moneyball staff will join pod uh, Maverick to talk about the game as quickly as possible. Um, we won't be having Rashad Phillips on ever again. <laughs> um, just, just, just sassing my friends at we talk Mavs. I, I, I would not, have that that guy within a thousand miles of the show um all right and so while you're you know while you're down there liking if you could go ahead and hit subscribe after the show if you could do me a favor and uh leave a comment would really appreciate it uh we're getting close to 2500 subscribers you know rome wasn't built in a day this season has been a little bit uh, up and down for the mavericks and for us if you're listening on an audio stream i'd appreciate it if you could give us a subscribe as well uh, you know, we'll, we're looking forward to kind of finishing out the rest of the regular season. It's almost February. We got All Star Break, March, and then hopefully the Dallas Mavericks in the playoffs. Um, T Bone is asking if I'm going to do a live show today. I don't think so, man. I was at the hospital till about 4 a.m. I am, I am cooked. Uh, so we'll see. And, um, and to uh, be honest, I don't know if this is the game. To- this is, yeah, like what's I don't really know what to talk about. So it's like we're going to kind of circle back to that. The second half of this game. Yeah. Um, all right. So thanks for letting me chill here. And uh, go ahead and listen to some of these uh, these these ads here on your your podcast uh, break here. So we're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash Blue Wire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. All right. Thanks for bearing with me for a few minutes. Um, here we are. What were we kind of rambling about? There's some things that we could talk about in this game that were actually absolutely worth our time. Um, I'm, I'm, I need the chat to tell me if uh, LeBron James actually got fouled on that final shot. I was watching over GameCast and um draymond green fouling lebron james with one second left in a double overtime game is an absolutely <laughs> insane call to me I, I need to know if it actually happens somebody please 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 let me know if that's true um uh, i suppose if you were to take away something good and there was a good thing about this game it was the 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 kind of oh awakening like reawakening <laughs> i mean it, it, it's it's the difference. Grant Williams played his finest basketball game statistically with the Mavericks this season. I don't think that's out of bounds. Do you? Uh, yeah, it is. Cause that's the season high. I forgot he had 25. I thought he had, I thought he got the 28, but he didn't. He had 25 against the bulls on November 1st. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, this is easily, I mean, I mean, so, 20, so tw- 27, 27. Eight, three, one block, three steals. Three assists and what he had, you know, we uh, him as the role man is going to is going to kill me because he's just he's got the yips in the middle of the lane. I can't stand watching him do that stuff. I don't want to see it anymore. But I did like him catching the ball in the three, driving the lane, making passes to the corner, and then occasionally actually attacking the rim. 
Um, he doesn't necessarily have to be like a true triple threat at all times, but he's got to hit enough threes to keep a team honest. So hitting seven out of 10 tonight is pretty absurd, but uh, that's, it's something because he has just been really, you know, I keep calling for them to trade him. I'm not backing off that at the moment. I still think they should trade him if he has any value, but if things are going to work with this team as constructed and they're not going to make any trades, Grant Williams will be a part of that game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Um, the chat notes, it's a career high for Grant Williams. Apologies. Okay. He's had 27 in the play. Oh, yeah. I guess that's a regular season thing. Cause mm-hmm. I know he's had 20, he had 27 in that game seven against Giannis, I think. So, yeah, I mean, and again, it just, he, there was some good, you know, he did have a couple of two point buckets that were pretty nice, but it, you know, it just make threes. That's kind of what it comes down to make threes, like seven of 10 from three. And the Kings clearly were like, you know, it's kind of funny because you think teams don't really look at their scouting reports in the regular season or really pay attention as much because these guys are playing, you know, four games in six nights or back to back. Like there's just not enough time to to really get into the nitty gritty of your defensive game plan when you're, when you're traveling and you're playing all these different teams every other night. Uh, it was pretty obvious that they were cool with leaving Grant Williams open. And why wouldn't you? He was hitting 25% of his threes uh, in January. And of course, lo and behold, uh, the poor Kings who can't seem to get through a fourth quarter without giving their fans a heart attack. Uh, Grant hit seven of 10. Um, defensively, he made, he had, you know, the block and, and three steals. So that was nice. He's still getting blown by a little bit too much for, for my tastes. Um, partly that might be just because how the Mavericks have to play him. Like, you know, he might be better suited, you know, I don't know where you play him because it seems like everyone just kind of blows by him lately. Um, but at the very least, he was able to make some help side defensive plays with the, with the block and the steals. Um, so if he is going to, you know, if guys are, if he is going to close out and guys are going to go by him, you know, at least he's trying to make up for it with some, some defensive splash plays, so to speak. So that's not totally there, but yeah, make open threes. Like that's the thing. Um, I don't know what else to say because that's, he's going to keep getting open threes. Like you play with Luka Doncic, you're going to continuously get open threes. Uh, if anything, he's going to get more open threes with how he's been shooting because teams are going to dare him to beat them. Um, so it's really important for him to be making these shots. I don't know how much momentum can carry over game to game because we, you know, we thought, he had kind of figured a little something out. He made, uh, I think, the last two games of December, he he shot the ball decently from three, and then he missed. He didn't make. He didn't, he made one three over the course of four, his next four games. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So he's, you know, I, it's way too early to say he's back. The last time he made more than three three pointers, he made four against the Spurs on December twenty third. He then went zero for two and zero for four in his next two games. So. I'm not trying to dump cold water on it. I, no, I get it. You know, you just can't look at this game and be like, he's back. It's, no, I, yeah. You but, just I mean, hope. this is you just hope. Because what else can you do? He just, he's the got open are, trees. He has to make them. That's kind of it. The Mavericks are so catastrophically injured. And so it's, it's really interesting. I'm not sure if anybody that listens to the podcast actually goes and reads our site. I'm, I'm a little curious as to the cross pollination of, of the audiences, but I wrote the recap for um, the really terrible loss the other night. Yeah. Uh, and then you wrote the recap last night for the Hawks win, which was really more of a Luka Doncic-based call and was fantastic, really enjoyed reading it after the fact. And I think those two pieces, even though they're game recaps, serve as sort of a mirror of the Mavericks' problems, like what works and what doesn't. And unfortunately, so much of this right now comes down to the fact that the team is really injured. I I led with that, that this team has a ton of built-in excuses. And, you know, it's 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 more than a little frustrating because, you know, heading into the this this season, I, I following the Kyrie Irving trade, I had so many people, like just so many people tell me that the Kyrie Irving games played thing and and the availability that it was just, it's, it's a, a freak series of things. Let's look at like looking at Kyrie Irving's injuries this year. I am still, I, I agree with that. He has had horrendous injury luck, but the fact remains he hasn't played. And 
you get into these games with these guys and the Mavericks just don't have any continuity. And so, you know, you start out eight and two and it's become kind of a survival game where you mentioned this. I mean, there's a realistic chance the Mavericks head into all-star break under 500. Like people are going to be really pissy about that. And I don't know how to, I, I, I don't want to constantly be raging on the team, the organization. Like that's not any fun for either of us, but I don't know how to really properly talk about this team because it feels a lot like last year's team. Only if things shake out injury wise a little bit, there's a there's pretty good hope for for uh, for some optimism. What do you think? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, we still lively. Luca, Kyrie, Exum, Jones have still only played like fifty minutes together. <laughs> like the, that's well, the thing you just kind of hang your hat on. But at a certain point, the worry I don't think the worry is let's see them be good with those guys because I I feel pretty confident that if the, all five of those guys are healthy at the same time. They would play pretty decent basketball. Problem is, is they're running out of time for me to believe that they're going to get those guys on the court enough to make it matter. Because um, uh-huh. these guys just keep going out. I mean, like I, we don't, you know, Jones was a game time decision, thankfully. So hopefully his injury isn't too bad. But I don't know. When right, Harry's I didn't even talk back. about like, him and Exum not playing. Like him and Exum not playing is it just it's it's hard to get. I'm such an emotional game watcher and I'm just like, like, what are they, like, what are they supposed to do? I mean, I, I will get mad at the individual performances within it. Like I, when I heard Brian Damaris talk about how Jaden Hardy is helping the team, despite the fact that his shooting sucks, I wanted to put a fucking shoe through my television. J- like, but then again, I'm like, why am I getting mad at a second year player who was the 37th or 38th pick, whatever the hell he was, he he's not he's not built for this. The six two non shooting guard because he's a non shooting guard at this point. Like the man can't hit shots, and he gets burned on defense so badly. Like why in the hell is Jaden Hardy on De'Aaron Fox for stretches? Like that's What's a thing. Guard? <laughs> Stop it. He's, he's six two. Like and, that's and, the problem. Like, I mean, the, the, yeah. Fox was looking at the dude like fried chicken. I know. I know. It's 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 like literally bad help um, in that regard. Before it's like why why are you putting the guy in that situation? And, and then you got Green, who for the second night in a row, I mean Green played fantastic last night. There's just no other way about this. And he yep. he he really like his box score doesn't look very impressive tonight. But I I thought he was fine. What did you think? Yeah, he was fine. I mean they don't have they don't have anyone else that can that can be. A secondary ball like when Kyrie's out like he is literally the only you know, if Kyrie and Exum are out like who else is dribbling the ball like that you trust uh besides Luca like it literally has to be him like he's kind of put in a tough situation but at least he's making some plays he had five assists you know two turnovers he still kind of has some some ill-advised turnovers um but he you know he scored the thing again is his for me, it's his defense. Um, his offense has kind of started to perk up lately, but his defense is just, it's still not there. Uh-huh. Like, I know his game, he did play a tremendous game against the Hawks, but the Mavericks gave up 143 points. <laughs> um, and, and Green is just not being the defensive difference maker, I think, a lot of us. Well, things. it's so, so I'm not funny. not trying to, to beat a guy down when he's finally getting some good box no, score but and production. You're, spe- you're speaking to the actual problem because Kyrie Irving comes back, and Kyrie Irving is so much better than Josh Green. It's not even a contextual. Like it's there, there is there is Josh Green, there is a entire series of planets and universes between their talent levels. And if Josh Green doesn't have the ball, Josh Green's not very good. It is is sort of the thing that we like he's not a fantastic off ball player. He needs to kind of be going at the rim with the ball. We've just seen enough of this. He he's not been good with Kyrie and Luca. Like that's just kind of a thing. And so you kind of go line by line and you're looking at different people. And again, like I, I saw my, my friend Henry in the chat kind of giving me some grief. I This thing was built to work with Kyrie. So what I'm trying to get at is like until Kyrie is actually playing regular minutes and if they're able to go on like, I don't know, let's say a 10 game stretch without somebody getting horrendously mangled in a stupid injury, then maybe it's time to kind of worry about stuff where it's, you know, you go through line by line and you're talking about tonight and 
Like Rashawn Holmes played a few meaningless minutes. Like Seth Curry played some meaningless minutes. AJ Lawson played four minutes and was a negative nine. God, that's hard to do. Um, I think the only real question that we have kind of as a fan base at this point is like, what do you like? Why is Omax not playing? Why is he not getting something? What's is there? Are we being ridiculous here? This would have been a good night for his for his kind of <sighs> freneticism. So I understand why he's not playing because I genuinely think that the coaching staff doesn't think he's ready because we've seen him play some NBA minutes and it doesn't always look great. Um, there's still a lot of things for him to work on. The thing that I don't have an answer for is when you're getting kind of run, when when the Kings are putting the lead up to 15, 16, 18, I think it got up to 21 in the first half. It got At back that up point, I'm like, see the, the game. Yeah. Like, give yeah. like, up. Like, yeah, like, either that or just like, okay, we've lost, how many have they lost? Five out of their last six, I think the Mavericks have. Right. Um, Or six out of their last nine. I can't remember what it is. But like, we're in a losing funk. You, you know, a lot of these losses have been by double digits. This one... I mean, this was a fake, you know, this was for all intents and purposes, you know, one of this should have been another double digit loss. Uh, you know, you just, you lost by double digits to the Lakers. You lost by nine to the Celtics. You lost by a billion to the Suns, And now you're down 20 again. I'm running out of reasons why you don't just be like, all right, I'm just going to throw this shit at the wall and see what that's see. And that's, I love that you say that. Cause that's actually what I asked Bobby about. So you guys, so if you're listening to this podcast and you didn't go listen to Bobby Corral and I, one of the things I get when you have a guy like Bobby on is like, you're having a team official on like, why are you having a team official on that's Mav state media, yada, yada, yada. Like Bobby wrote with me at another website. Bobby is not a, a state media person. Bobby is a Mavs media person that has not like Mavs media doesn't really have anything to do. Like they don't get inside information. They're just a version of public relations with some analysis. And so Bobby actually really knows basketball. And one of the things he and I like, like we're kind of beating around because he cannot come out like literally as part of his job. He cannot come out and criticize the Mavericks outright. Like I'm saying, and any of you who have jobs, like you wouldn't go on a public forum and criticize your boss either. But one of the things we did talk about and he did say out loud was he does not know why they're not trying certain things. That's the thing he said, because he can't know that. And so one element of that was actually kind of nice to hear. Because it means they have, that's the thing though. It's, it's like, if you want to be an optimist, it means they have things to try. And again, Jay in the chat says he, te- he seems to be cherry picking good stats against tanking teams. No, Jay, that's not how it works. It's he's look, the fact that is the Mavericks haven't played a very good schedule. So you're playing a good, you know, some of these stats do come against, you know, the fact that you've played Portland three times. But like when you're looking against things in aggregate, there are things that the Mavericks do better than other things. And we were having a real discussion about how, why isn't Lively allowed to guard in space? Why are you playing Derek Lively in drop? And he explained it to me. He said, you know, they're kind of worried about foul trouble is what he thinks. So there's an element of this. Can they, are there things that they could I, unleash is really stupid because they're nearly 500, but are there kind of almost borderline desperation moves that they could try to make to see if it would make a difference? And I think the answer to this is strategically. Yes, there are. I just don't think they're going to die. I just don't see kid doing it. Like I really don't kid is a kid is a stubborn coach. He is a, um, I don't think he's a very good coach. Uh, for this team, like uh, tonight would have been another night where he should have picked up a couple technicals to motivate the team and just hands in his pockets. I mean, what what are you going to do? Yeah, I know. And if you want to look to last season, um, I remember in January when the Mavericks were losing some games uh, and Jaden Hardy was not in the rotation, there was an upswell. Why isn't Jaden Hardy getting minutes? They're losing. And it was a good question then. I know, I know. And, and then he ended up playing in February and March and, and having a pretty good end of the season. So maybe that's what they're doing with Omax. Maybe they saw what they did with Hardy and they're like, hey, let's just do that with Omax. Let's uh, let's let him get his feet wet for a little bit. And then when we get to the All-Star break, uh, we're going to let him, you know, we're going to let him play. I don't, I don't know if that's what they're, if they're thinking, but it, it is kind of funny how it is kind of following the same pattern as Hardy did last year. Um, so I don't know. Um, I really don't. And, and like I said, you know, if the Mavericks were losing these games that they're losing, 
by like if they were wire to wire, you know, five, six point games, I get it because most coaches aren't going to play late round pick rookies when they're trying to win games, when they think they're a playoff team. Like that's not exclusive to kid. Like we, we just had an era of Rick Carlisle where we had to beat our heads against the wall with him and how he treated young players. Like it's just not unique to kid, but if these losses keep going this way, if these games keep going where anytime they play a good team, they are just getting drubbed, you know, within, within 12, 14 minutes. I, d- I just don't see what the harm is. You're already down 18. Right. Or 20. Throw all like, Max out there. What is he going to, what is he going to make worse from a right. team that seems to give up? They'll play good defense for 20 seconds, give up a, a, a contested three, but then because of the rotations, you have Josh Green boxing out their center, and then whoever shot the three is able to go get the rebound and score. Yeah, yeah. And their size is just, I mean, they're playing Grant Williams' as backup five. You know, they obviously Rashawn Holmes is not the answer. They've got these injuries. Maxi Kleba is not looking, good, like, great. Like, they just, it really feels like it's lively. Like, lively is the only legitimate big and not saying Omax is a big, but he's at least a big forward. Like they just don't, you know, Tim is not a big for like Lucas are only like other big perimeter player. Um, if you think about it, uh, it's just, it's just tough to consistently win games against good teams when you're, you know, you're expecting Luca to be the second biggest player on the floor for most of the game. Uh, you don't want him to, to be that. <laughs> you need someone else. So yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, they're. I don't know if it's going to change because they're playing. Maybe it'll change because maybe they get down a big in another game and and they give them a shot. Because, my God, the schedule. The schedule is just. I can't emphasize enough how difficult the schedule is. Uh, I mean, I, I think Joel Embiid might weeks. score. I think Joel Embiid might retake the single seat, like the the most points scored. <laughs> Take the crown from Luca. I mean, I really do like. Who in the hell guards him? Especially now that he's shooting like what fifty one percent on mid rangers. Yeah, it's one of those. That's things. Not lively. That's not lively. He is. He is percent. dirt. He is. Like, I'm not exaggerating. He is Dirk Nowitzki from fifteen to seventeen feet. It is incredible. Is. Yeah, this is an amazing those free throw line jumpers. This is an amazing take from our man seventeen in the chat, noting that he's saying Derek Lively is tradable, and he says for a better big like Claxton. Like <laughs> what? No. Okay. No, that's one we just ignore. We got. Oh no, no. he's he's a he's a frequent chat contributor. Oh, okay. I, I I appreciate the take. Oh okay, it's, it's a bold <laughs> take. I just think he's insane. Oh, well, um, <sighs> what else did I want to kind of talk about here? You said you wanted to circle back to Embiid, or is that where you? Oh, it's you, just so so Embiid. About? Like, look, yeah. these you know, I have a lot of feelings about the NBA, mixed. For example, let's go over the 73-point game last night. Every single person who had a negative reaction to Luka scoring 73 points last night is a fucking hater ass clown that didn't watch the game. Shut the fuck up. How's that for a clip? There you go. <laughs> I'm with you. That's Stephen what I'm A. Smith gets about. on television today and talks about how disgusting it is. and blah, blah, blah. It's like, you didn't watch the game, you hack. Like, No, you didn't. <laughs> did Atlanta play horrendous defense? Yes, they did. No They're problem. a bad defensive team. They're a <laughs> bad defensive team. <laughs> so are Luka, the Spurs, who Lynn B dropped 70 on. <laughs> Luca did what he was supposed to. So yeah. there's this cadre of fans, whole bunch of them. I would argue most NBA fans at this point. Like NBA online, fans, online fans. Online NBA online fans, fans yeah. are a miserable group of people who do not actually like NBA basketball. They like complaining about NBA basketball. They don't enjoy the sport so you have this happen this is like so 73 points you have Devin Booker score another bajillion points in a loss uh then today you have Joel Embiid who hasn't played in Denver since before COVID (laughs) so he travels to the game and then they're uh what what they decide to hold him out he wasn't on the injury report he wasn't on the injury report which means they're gonna get super fined for that This was their marquee game. They were on ABC. Like, they built their national TV schedule around this game today. And then the super fraud that he is, and I just, I love hating Joel Embiid. He is a villain for me. I don't care how good he is. The coward stays in the locker room 
almost the whole game and then goes out and waves like he's some fucking WWE wrestler. Man, people paid to watch you play, you bum. I'm just so sick of this shit. And then, of course, to rub it like to, to just make all this this shit sandwich take taste delicious. Adam Silver gets re-upped as commissioner. He sucks. <laughs> he sucks. Mm-hmm. He is the kind of commissioner who is terrified of the players. He gets worked by the owners. And granted, he is employed by the owners, so I understand this. But a, a good person in that position is like David Stern and Robert Gade- or, uh, Roger Goodell, who are kind of able to push back on the bullshit. This guy kowtows to everything. He is a weak sauce wuss of a commissioner and you know what their their next big objective is as an nba thing expansion what the fuck kind of talent do they think this league has for expansion go look at the spurs go look at the portland trailblazers these teams which are offensive to basketball that's another 36 players between two teams 15 rostered plus three um two-way players that you can have There aren't that many good basketball players out there that want to play in the NBA. There are enough good basketball players out there in the world. I do. I I, want to be clear about that. But a lot of these guys don't want to play on garbage teams. And so, like, I just this was a whole series of days where, you know, we should have and we did. Don't get me wrong. If you're a Mavs fan like that is not online, you probably had a great day. And you're like, man, Lucas scored 73 points. I'm (laughs) going to remember that till the end of my life and you know what you should you should but you have this whole cadre of people who exist to tell you why the thing that you love is bad and then you have everybody else going out and not playing the game it's just it's such a big joke it's such a big joke and what's going to happen and this is just my opinion i've been going off for a little bit now i'm sorry what's going to happen is the nba is going to get a moderate increase to their tv deal And why do we care about that? Honestly, the only reason Josh and I care about that is he and I are downstream from what happens with the money in this. Josh and I make a little bit of money because people are watching the NBA. But what's happening is nobody's watching the NBA. I can't stress this enough. So when you see people online talking about how, oh, man, the NBA is doing great. They're not. They got beat by women's college basketball the other day on on, um, that South Carolina uh, LSU game. Mm -hmm. The, The NBA games got whopped by that. Nobody is watching the sport. It has a real problem. It just has uh, uh, players with great Q scores. This is a maddening situation for me because I really, I actually like NBA basketball. Maybe that's a me problem. <laughs> no, you do. I think the Embiid thing was just like, we because we've gotten into, we've, we've had little sparring matches about like the, the player rest and the, and the load management stuff. Um, because I've tried to take the player's side on it a little bit just because of the the reporting about what youth basketball does to these guys. Like, but something like this, like he's not on the injury, like that was bad. Like that was that was my joker moment, I think, when I saw that that Impede wasn't playing. Because at a certain point, like the people that go to the games, the people that are buying tickets, mm-hmm. I mean, it's pretty clear that the NBA doesn't think that's their most valuable customer, but it should be like they think their most valuable customer is someone who watches highlights on twitter uh or watches youtube clips or 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 whatever or or maybe actually watches on league pass or or occasionally watches on tv it's it's pretty obvious that they don't seem to care too much about uh the guy the people that pay tickets to go watch which is the whole reason the sport exists in the first place uh like if people aren't buying tickets to go to games like there's the sport doesn't exist anymore um and like that's just like what I cannot still imagine. Go. People, people still go, but I know, but I cannot imagine the level of frustration that the people that bought tickets to that game felt. Like there, I, I imagine people that buy tickets to NBA games are are now pretty well versed in disappointment and and injuries and and having bad luck. But usually, there's a, like there's an injury report. Like you get let down easy. Like the fact that he was a late like. There are people in that building that brought signs, like and did, like they were ready to watch. Like they literally yanked him out right before the game started, for the most part. Like I mean, he got 
Oh, they're going to get fined, and they should yeah. get fined. And they I should. hope they I do. Mean, I don't they, care. Like there should be a suspension or something. Yeah. Like it's 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 egregious. Like it's detrimental to the sport. Like I don't know what else you can call it. Like I just like there are going to be people, young maybe young people in that arena, or I don't know. It doesn't matter, young or old. But there's definitely some people in that arena that I wonder that are like, why why did I like why like why should I invest my time? Why should I invest my money? Like I could be doing any literally anything else that values my time and there's a lot of money options more. yeah there's a lot of options i think about this it's so funny you say that like look part of why i do this in no small part is because of the people that we interact with and the people that let us know our show matters to them if i didn't get the feedback i would i would quit because it's not it's it's not that it's not fun it's just it's it's hard and I want to watch television. I want to play video games, <laughs> but I don't because I talk to you guys. <sighs> I don't know. That was kind of off base for our show tonight. It's just, it's like this, this, the NBA is so bad. at celebrating the things that matter because it is constantly su supported by partners who tell you everything about it sucks. I mean, I have friends like I have my, one of my, one of my good friends, who I talk basketball with all the time. This uh, this this Bucks guy named No Tech Ben. He's a couple years older than me. He's just like, this is disgusting. I don't like any of this scoring stuff. Blah blah blah. And I'm sitting here and I just I gave him shit. And I'm like, if Giannis Antetokounmpo, your favorite player, had scored 50 points or 75 points on 91% true shooting, you would never shut the fuck up about it. And and that's okay. It's just it's like. Can't we just enjoy it? Like, we all like, I'm sorry, go watch the Kobe game. The Kobe game exists. He was playing <laughs> when Kobe scored 81 points. Was It was 81, right? Yeah, 81. The, he played with two centers and Smush Parker. Uh, it was Chris Mim and um, who was the guy that the Wizards drafted number one? Uh, uh, Kwame the, Brown. Kwame Brown. Like, it's one of the worst lineups ever. And Kobe shot 46 times. And that was during the run where Kobe was absolutely unbelievable. Like, arguably the best Kobe game I think that ever happened during that stretch was when he scored 62 against the Mavericks in three. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Like I that was like remember that. That was a like that was murder. I think the 82 points game in hindsight is different because he shot like a thousand times along with 20 free throws. Like the the anyway, I'm a little off key, but it's just like, why can't we be like, holy shit, this was amazing? And it's just it's so hard for people nowadays to say, oh my God, that was an incredible thing. You know, it's why I, I like, like, um, I, I made fun of him earlier, but, but Rashad Phillips, uh, the, the shit he holds, like, oh, I've, I've, everybody just worth 70 points. Like, shut the fuck up. Enjoy the game, you hack. Oh, man. So, I just looked up your, your friend Ben, no tech Ben's tweet about it. He really did say disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, then I, I told him back, I was like, your face is disgusting, Ben. Stop with this. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you can say it. This is why I'm glad you're the shadow broker because you can say all the things to all the people that I don't know. Eh, uh, you know, we all get to we all get to enjoy sports how we want to, okay? And we should. But I just I don't understand. There are too many games to hate this, and it really feels like a lot of people are like, I'm going to spend a lot of my time hate watching the shit out of this. What, what like, I, I okay, go ahead, go ahead, hmm. go ahead. No, go ahead. I still like the Mavericks. No one who believes me sometimes, but I swear to you, I do like the Mavericks. Yeah. What I'm wondering is like, like what does Ben think or and anyone that thinks like that, like to get the game back to scoring, like how it was, I guess they want to see like Pistons okay. yeah. NBA finals games again. Like, I guess they want the 98, 88 games again. No. Like, All right. So let's use the NFL as a comparison. The genie's point. out of the bottle. Like it's, the only way that they could make rules to significantly impact scoring is to make it a street fight. Like I, you, it would be unwatchable. Like it's not just that they've ham, like this idea that defenses are just hamstrung and it's the rules that are holding back these defenses from playing like elite level basketball. Like, I'm sorry. The offensive talent is significantly better than it was 20 years ago. Yes. And the coaching is better than it was 20 years ago. The roster building is better than it was 20 years ago. Mark Cuban, I'm pretty sure it was, like, almost on record saying, like, the reason why the Mavericks were so ahead of the game when he bought was because every owner when he got into the NBA was, like, a 70-year-old fogey. That's right. And he capitalized on it, like, that smartly. And I think he he's owned up. He's, like, he's admitted that. Um 
if not, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he would. Like, I, I just like, yeah, there could maybe be some rule changes so that players that initiate contact aren't always given the benefit of the doubt. But okay, so Lucas scores 68 points instead. Like, I don't. Lucas, there isn't yeah, an Lucas, end game for Lucas these game people. last night was yeah. not affected. Yeah. So there, he made 15 free throws. That's not yeah. a lot. He, he, the, the, eight three, the eight threes was yes. what turned Luca into a murderous three. like buzzsaw. Like, do they want to get rid of the three point line so people are, are spotting up around the, the the half circle near the free throw line? Well, so I I, I, I think know. that's kind of the thing. And so one of my friends pointed out that the NFL for the last like fifteen years has more or less had the same scoring point per game. And average. people fucking love the NFL, right? So, but how does that happen? How do you keep the same scoring average? despite the fact that teams are constantly innovating defense are constantly changing. Like you remember, and granted this, I don't know, our European followers are going to hate this, but like in football, most teams went to a cover two to prevent Patrick Mahomes from destroying them from deep with Tyreek Hill. So the fact that they've done all these, like teams are constantly adjusting to the rules. Football is a lot more complicated than basketball, but still also, a lot of also football teams get a week off to prepare. Sure. NBA teams do not they get they don't practice but don't so, practice so, anymore. but but here's here's kind of the thing the nfl rules committee gets together every year and they talk about stuff we yeah. have a guy uh matthew phillips who comes on a couple of times he loses his mind at the nfl because the nfl the way it's called from year to year the rules are frankly different year to year we're talking the like the holding off the line for wide receivers the pass interference calls the sort of stuff that's really, really in the weeds. Like Patrick Mahomes got um, Buffalo last week on like some delayed pass interference call, which in my mind was even as a Chiefs fan, I was like, that's some bullshit. And th what the NFL does is I really think they man not like manipulate, but they're basically like their points of emphasis stick. Like there's some years where holding is simply not called, period. And so I think they adjust this sort of stuff year to year, which results in sort of the same point per game. And the, despite the game kind of constantly change it, whereas the NBA, they switched to the no hand check rule, which allowed Steve Nash to win two MVPs. And we haven't done anything different. We've done nothing different. They, they go to these points of emphasis every now and again, where um, you will say, all right, we're going to, we're really going to work on, we're going to not call trap. We're going to call traveling. That's, that's, you know, one example. And that like sticks for like two weeks and then they go back to the same shit because the referees are fucking terrible. Yeah, I know. But, but I'm just, I think my overall point is that like these people that are like disgusted with these offensive performances, like if they change the rules a little bit and get, oh, they're still going to hate it. Yeah. Like they're still going to like, yeah. okay. So all those guys, instead of scoring a bunch of 70 and 60 pointers scored 50 and four, like they're still going to be like, it, yeah you you can't go back like the, it's it pandora's box has been open unless you want guys to be able to put two hands on defense on players on the perimeter and be able to tug jerseys and be able to whack people on the arms at the rim and, you know you're just never gonna you're never gonna get it back to to where it was like yeah. i just i wouldn't mind the hand check no and i yeah. also think i think they should experiment in the g league with removing the corner three yeah, I think I think they should experiment for sure, and I would I would love to see the you know some of these tiki tack offensive initiated fouls, which get mm -hmm. called on these defenders who feel like they can't really do anything about it. Yep. But like, you change that, and what's that going to make it? Is that going to that's not going to make these games go back to what you think no. is what you loved when you were younger? Which no, is just, the skill is know, the skill is too skill, high. Yes, like. I, I see this stuff, and this is not a fair comparison point, but like the sheer skill level stuff that I get for my seven year old son fed to me in my Instagram, where it's like, this is how you properly teach a 10 year old boy how to shoot. I played 5A at the time, varsity level basketball. Never against, got that shit. Against like 12 people that made the NBA. I didn't learn how to dribble with my left hand effectively until I was 16. Yeah. So it's like the kind of stuff you see nowadays on a skill level basis with young it is crazy. So I, mm -hmm. I think you're right about that. Yeah. Like, Dude, I'm, I'm down right. for, uh, like I'm down for change. I just this I is a good one. I, I they gotta remove the defensive three in the key. Just 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 see what happens. Like that's really what I want. It's like just just try some things. Can we try some things? I think that's a fair I think you know, I think yeah, I would try right some things. things. That, yeah. that, the, that the people who hate are going to continue to hate. But can we yes. try some things? That's my answer. 
Okay, yeah, I'll compromise there for sure. God, we talked for fifty two minutes about this shit. Well, yeah, <laughs> this is why you love. Pod we talked more about Africa, we talked more about that than we did about the game, but that's okay. That's fine. Oh, no, we did game. talk. We talked about the game for like yeah, thirty five minutes. I know that's true. Okay, we found okay. a way. Life finds a way. Yeah, so you know, looking ahead here, what do we got? We got uh, a real fright <laughs> fest real ahead fun. for the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. Where? <laughs> All right. So starting um, on Monday, they play Orlando. That's a seats for soldiers game. That's a home game. The Mavericks very rarely lose seats for soldiers game. They have to win, the the, and they play Orlando pretty well too. So, but Orlando is a they turn most def- most offenses into three yards in a cloud of dust. So yep. the Mavericks better better come ready to shoot because the Orlando's length is problematic. Then they go mm-hmm. Milwaukee, or I'm sorry, then they go Minnesota uh, on on Wednesday. That's the last game in January. And then they go they get two days off, and then they go Milwaukee on Saturday, Seventy uh, Sixers on Monday, and then yeah, we'll we'll. They 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 just they need to win. If they could win these next two games, Orlando and Minnesota, that would go. That would, that'd be huge because they're. I think they're gonna get destroyed by Milwaukee and Philadelphia. I think so too. And Milwaukee's gonna be riding that high of new coach. Teams always play better. Uh, they play, yeah. They always play better after a, a coaching change. Um, yeah, these next four: Orlando, Minnesota, Milwaukee, Philly. I'm expecting them to go one and three, one and three in those four games. So anything better than one and three would be massive. Absolutely. It would be. All right, man. I'm so sorry for making you talk this long. No, you and okay. I joked about wanting to do something different. No, um, head on over to Mavs Moneyball, guys. If you've not checked anything out, I was really, really, really impressed with our staff this week. Um, we have a, like a minimum post count for month just for some behind the scenes stuff. So I teased everybody. And my like, guys were coming a little bit close. And then, of course, the Luca thing happens against um, where he gets, and we just have everybody has a take on it. Then Luca turns around and scores seventy three points. You want to talk about a content factory? It's I remember one guy who very uh, who was like, "Your podcast would suck if the Mavericks didn't have Luca." And I was like, "Well, well, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're I'm here, okay. man. <laughs> Of course, no, one, no one fucking listened to us when it was Harrison Barnes and Sala Measury. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, all right, but we'll be back on Monday. Then we'll be back on Wednesday. I'll host a fan show one of these nights. I just, it's almost midnight now. I got to go to bed. Everybody be good. Thanks for hanging out uh, and uh, go Mavs.